What's the weather like out there? It's hot. Damn hot. Real hot. Hot in this is my shorts. I can cook things in it. Hi, I'm Glyn Jewish, and I want to let you know about my brand new book, Photograph Like a Thief. Now, I truly believe that your own unique style starts with copying because you have to have a starting point. But when I say copying, I mean looking at the work of other great photographers, their lighting, composition, posing, how they retouch their images, learning from it and going on to create something completely new. Now I've packed a lot into this book. There's a whole chapter dedicated to reverse engineering, equipment, my favourite retouching techniques, and 10 chapters taking you from coming up with an idea, the lighting, the setup, the photo shoot, and the complete retouching steps from start to finish. So check out Photograph Like a Thief, available now where all good books are sold. Hello everybody. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, just like uh, the good old Robin Williams just said there, my God, it is hot. Uh, those of you in the UK, this is a bit of a, a bit of a sweat session. Um, but yeah, this is damn hot in here. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, hopefully I won't kind of collapse. If you hear a bang, it's because I've fallen over and banged my head. But I've come prepared. I've got uh, a towel for mopping the brow and uh, two glasses of water. So hopefully that'll be enough to go through. Um, so there's a few things I want to go through with you. Let's just turn the volume down. I take, I take it the sound's all right, the audio's all right. You're not hearing like a reverb or anything because I can hear my voice going through twice. Is that all right? Hi, Geert. Uh, Zen, cheers for that, mate. Great book, Glenn. Love it. Thank you very much. Glenn Hewitt, good man. I have your book and love it. Good to hear that. Hey, Glenn, if you get a chance, mate, and you would really do like it, drop onto Amazon and drop us a couple of lines, will you? Publishers will absolutely love you for it. So will I. Um, all right, so there's a few things I want to go through then. We will try and go through it quite quick. If you do need to dive out, um, I'd rather you didn't, but if you do need to dive out, this will be uploaded onto the YouTube channel afterwards. It takes a short while for it to come back onto the channel, but you'll be able to watch it there. Uh, but to dive off in, first things, you can see on the screen, we've got this uh, ebook. Now, those of you who uh, subscribe to my newsletter or email group, uh, you should have received that this week. You should have received an email with a link to download that ebook. It's kind of based on the book uh, Photograph Like a Thief. Uh, it's kind of loosely based on the very first chapter, but I've added in, added in some extra bits at the end as well, showing how you can create like a classic Rembrandt style lighting. Just a couple of pages on it, but just to show you how really simple and, and really easy that is. So if you if you want to get that ebook, just join the newsletter. I won't be spamming you. I've, I kind of put a video out as well saying I want it to be more like a community thing. So it will be a two way thing. Uh, and I mentioned about needing to ask your advice on some things occasionally as well. And in fact, probably this week, I'll need to drop you an email out to ask you a couple of questions about something I've got coming out because I do want to make it good. And as it's for generally for kind of you folks, I want to make sure that what I'm sending out is going to be bang on. So I will ask your advice this week. But uh, let's just dive over them. Uh, let's have a look at just a couple of techniques. Uh, hello from Sacramento. Cool. What's it like over there? Is it as hot as it is here? It's 34 degrees here, but apparently even hotter tomorrow. Um, right, okay, so this particular picture here, just so you're aware, this is actually going to be coming out. This is the one that I've mentioned about uh, a few times now. It's called uh, Cover Shoot. It's a full-length tutorial. Uh, a good friend, Frank Dorhoff and his wife, Anna Week, uh, they filmed me when I went over to the Netherlands to photograph Rosa that you can see on screen now. So we've got all the photography side of things. Hi, Bill. Uh, got all the photography side of things. We've also got the retouching side of things as well. So it's going to be a real big bundle putting that out probably in the next three to four weeks, something like that. So I want to make sure that we actually bang on with it. But I want to show you one part of it, uh, and that's to do with skin smoothing. I mentioned in the actual... Um, uh, description of what this is going to be about. One of them was to do with skin smoothing. So I want to quickly run through something to do with the skin retouching. So if we look over in the uh, right hand side of the screen here, we've got my layers panel. You can see all these different layers here uh, going through absolutely everything that goes on in this uh, particular picture here. But if I come all the way down to where the skin is there, let's just get rid of the skin just there. So I want to take it to the point where we're going to do skin retouching. Now, if there's any kind of techniques in Photoshop that there's a lot of, 
skin retouching is going to be way up there. There are so many different ways that you can do uh, skin retouching. Lorraine, how are you doing, Lorraine? You're going to love this. You're going to love this one. Um, there's so many different ways that you can do skin retouching. Now, some of them kind of uh, go a little bit too far. You might have seen that skin that looks a little bit porcelain and not realistic. It doesn't really retain much of the skin texture. Well, hopefully you'll see that this one does. All right. So I want to take you through the steps that we're going to go for that. I've also got an action. You can see in the top right hand corner here, there's a couple of actions. I'm going to be sending that action out probably in the next week or so, next few days uh, on the newsletter as well. So you'll be able to get that because there's quite a few steps involved in it. But just give you an idea of what it is. Well, first of all, what we need to do is create a merged or stamp layer to the top of the layer stack. If you're on PC, hold down your Shift, Control, Alt and E keys on a Mac, Shift, Command, Option and E. And that'll create this merged layer here. Let's just call this Skin Smoothing like so. Those of you who don't know, a merged layer basically is a combination of all the layers below it. So you can see if I turn them all off, nothing changes on Rosa here, remains exactly the same. All right, so we'll go to just there. So here's what we need to do for skin smoothing. A few steps we're going to have to go through. First things first, change the blend mode from normal to vivid light. Then we're going to go to image, adjustments, and invert. That's the second thing. Then we're going to go to filter, other, and high pass. Now, high pass, you would normally expect to be used for sharpening. But just think now, we've actually inverted the image. So whenever we now apply a filter, it's actually going to do the opposite. So instead of sharpening, it's now going to be smoothing, which is what we want for this. Now, this is a high resolution image of Rosa. So generally with a high res image, you're looking at around about 20 pixel radius, something like that. And it kind of makes the picture start to look a little bit funky, but bear with me in that one. So we'll click OK. The next thing you need to do is go to the filter menu, blur, and then we'll try Gaussian blur. And in here, high res picture, just a pixel radius of around about three should be fine. But again, there's a lot of steps in this. I will be sending out an action for it. All right, so we'll just click OK there for now. Now, if when we look at this here, you can see that the picture's obviously gone a little bit weird. Uh, Rosa's skin, it looks kind of strange. There's this haloing effect and all this kind of stuff going around here. But if you can kind of try ignoring the rest of all this stuff around here, but just look at Rosa's forehead and her cheek. It's definitely smoothed it out. It's kind of flattened it out as well. There's less depth and dimension involved in there. But this area of her skin has definitely got smoother. But we've lost highlights and we've lost shadows. So now we need to bring them back. So the way we bring them back is this. Where you've got your layer and you've got the layer name, if you double click just to the right hand side of the layer name, it brings up the blending options. And this looks all kind of confusing for those of you who've maybe never used this before where we've got this bit in the middle especially. We've got these two gradient bars at the bottom called this layer and one called underlying layer. We're just going to use the one called this layer. Now, incidentally, if you didn't like to uh, double click here to bring up the blending options, just go down to the very bottom where it's got FX. Click on that and the very top one there just says blending options brings up exactly the same thing. So we can now use these two uh, sliders. Hello from Yorkshire. Hi, Gary. <laughs> these two sliders here. We're only going to use the this layer slider. Now, the right-hand side one, look what happens to Rosa when I bring it across to the right. Can you see how it's now? Let's just bring her over just a little bit, put her over there so it's nice and clear. You can see now how it brings in the highlight areas, but it's not very, well, obviously it doesn't very really blend in very well. So we need to help it to blend in and to kind of just look natural. And there's one way that we do that, real simple way. If you're on a PC, hold down your Alt key. If you're on a Mac, hold down your Option key and just click on the little marker and you'll see that it splits in two. So now take the right hand part that you've split and drag it way over. And now if you look at Rosa, those highlights are coming back, but they're not so severe. So I'm going to take it round about kind of there. We can play around with this afterwards to get it exactly right. So that's the highlights. Now let's do the shadows. So we come to this marker over this side, hold down the Alt key, click on it to separate it, then drag it across like there. So you can see now how Rosa is now starting to look really, you know, kind of normal, but there's still this haloing going on it. But it's a skin that we're really interested in. But look at the skin now, really lovely and smooth, but the texture is still there as well. And that's the key with this is smoothing skin, but it needs to look realistic. And by being realistic, you need to have some of that original skin texture in there. So what we'll do now then is just click OK. 
Now, one thing I always say to people is there's three things in Photoshop that you need to be aware of. And if you're aware of them, there's pretty much, well, you can do anything. You know, you look at some pictures that are just layers upon layers upon layers. You look at friends of mine like Adrian Sommerling, who does lots of amazing composites. There'll be layers upon layers. There's probably gigabytes of file size there. But I guarantee you within there, there'll be three things. Layer masks, brushes, blend modes no matter what there'll always be layer mask brushes and blend mode so if you are kind of know a bit about them there's nothing you can't do so think about it now we've already used a blend mode i'm now going to use a layer mask and the layer mask needs to be black to hide the effect of this skin smoothing because at the moment the whole picture has been smoothed we only want it in certain areas so i'm going to hold down my alt key on pc option key on mac come to the bottom of the layers panel and then click on the layer mask icon that now adds a black layer mask, so it's kind of hiding the effect. And all I need to do now is get a brush. And I'm going to get a, a white brush. Let's bring the size down just a little bit. Let's make sure it's nice and soft. And we'll take the opacity all the way to 100%. So there's three things there, layer mask, brush, and blend mode, all in this one particular technique. Now what you're then going to do is you're going to brush over Rosa to bring in the effect, the full effect of all that skin smoothing. And I'm going really quickly here, but basically what you want to do is you want to try and avoid the hair too much. Certainly avoid the eyelashes. And we'll just bring it down to here. I'm going to go very, very quickly. And bear in mind, I would go over Rosa's hands. I'd go over it kind of right here on her legs and all that kind of stuff as well. But I'm just going to go through it very quickly just to show you what we need to do here. So let's just go underneath the eyes. And there. Now, a good way of checking to see where we've painted is just press the backslash key. And then we can see there's certain areas around her eye, just underneath the lips here as well, I need to get rid of. So we'll just come under here. And there. Let's just say that's gone very quickly. Let's have a look. Yeah, that'll do. That will be on the nose, actually. And there's just a bit here. Let's get rid of that as well. Whoops. Let's get rid of that as well, just on the nose. All right. So very, very quickly. But now then. So if I turn that on and off, hopefully you'll be able to see this on your screens. I'm not sure how this is going to come across during a live stream, but that's before and that's after. It's a lot smoother. It's kind of evened out the skin tones as well, because sometimes you get those uh, patches of skin that are brighter than others. This will smooth them out and also kind of smooth the skin out as well. Now, you might not want to have it at full effect. If you've got somebody like very, very young who's got really smooth skin anyway, and you have then applied this, it would then look a bit porcelain-like. But because it's on its own layer, you can then just come in with the uh, opacity and take it down to maybe 60% by pressing six on your keyboard, 70% by pressing seven, and so on and so forth. So that's before, after, before, after. Really quick way of doing some skin smoothing. But like I said, I'll be putting the action out in the newsletter, uh, and I'll go through some comments in a short while to see if there's any questions. But Let's have a quick break for a second because then I'm going to go through another thing. I've got a list here of stuff that I want to get through really quick before I melt. So let's just go to here and then we'll go on with something else. That was a really quick break, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, so that was just to advertise. Uh, where are we? That's just to advertise that create. It's called a photographer's creativity pack that I'm bringing out. Uh, let me just get rid of that. And I'm going to bring up another picture for you now, because what I want to do now, I got asked not so long ago about how do I add floors in. Um, I think if I've got the actual finished picture, let's just bring up Lightroom. This is a picture of a, a guy from the Home Guard. And some of you may have seen when you've looked at pictures I've been posting out recently that I do like to add in fake floors because I'm photographing people on a great, uh, great bit of paper. And you can see on this one particular here, rather than it being a texture, it's actually like a, a concrete slab tile type of floor. Now, what I've actually got in that creativity pack, this sounds like a big advert, doesn't it, this one? But it's not, I promise you. It's for a reason. Um, I've actually got some of these textures here. These are going to be in that creativity pack. They're not going to be dirt cheap, but to give you an idea, here's some of them here. If I just open them up, just click on this one. It should open up, he says. Let's, how about this one here? No, right. Well, it's just, oh, well. There's some floor textures in there as well. <laughs> Let's just drag that one over, actually. There we go. So you can just see there's like this concrete type floor there and what have you. So I'll try to quickly show you how we can add in 
the floor on this particular picture here because if I just turn off the background you can see this guy here has been photographed with a grey piece of paper behind him and also coming down onto the floor as well. Um, check out the blog if you've not seen how I do this. There's also videos on my YouTube channel showing you how you can do this particular technique. But I want to in particular cover the floor side of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this particular floor here and I'm just going to drag it out. I like to keep these in my creative cloud because it makes them uh, easy to find no matter where I am and whatever computer I'm on. All right, so here's this kind of uh, tiled floor that I've got. And first thing I need to do when we add these textures in, because we're going to add them onto a grey background, is desaturate them because we're going to use a blend mode to add it onto the grey paper. And if there's any kind of colour in there, it can look a little bit odd. So let's just go to the image menu, adjustments, and we'll choose, whoops, not invert. What am I talking about? <laughs> it's the heat. It's the heat, I tell you. Image, adjustments, and desaturate. All right, so the next thing we'll do then. I'm going to drag this down just to the part where it's going to touch the bottom of the uh, the wall just there. And then I'm going to go to Command or Control T to bring up Free Transform. Now what you can also do here, if you right click in here, you're going to get a few options that you can use when you're using this kind of transform here. And one of them is perspective. Because at the moment that floor, you're just looking straight down onto it. So we need to make sure that kind of uh, tiled floor matches the perspective of the floor that the soldier is stood on. So it needs to kind of come across. Real simple way that we can fake it is by using that perspective option just there. And then we click on any of the bottom left or the bottom right handles. And then we just drag outwards. And you can see it kind of fakes looking as if it's lifting up. See that? That's kind of cool. So I'm going to bring it out to around about there. Then I'm going to right click and go scale because we need to bring it down a bit now as well. So something like that. Now let's just zoom in. We'll go for there. Now, do you remember those three things I mentioned about? Brushes, lay masks, and blend modes? We're going to use those again in a moment. But I think the first thing I'll do is a little bit bright, that floor. So I'm going to go to get some levels. So we can go Command or Control L to bring up the levels. And I want to darken it down. Now, sometimes when you darken things down, you might be tempted to go and grab the mid-tone slider. But I tend to find that's a little bit severe, especially if you're using it on a picture that's got some colour in it. Now, we've taken the colour out of this floor, so it's not so much of an issue. But what I want to do to darken this one down is actually take this point here, this white point and the black point. Now, if I take the white point and drag it over, it'll darken down the floor, but a much more subtle and natural kind of way of doing it as well. So we'll go from around about there for now and then click OK. Now this at the moment, you can see it kind of looks like he's levitating on that floor. It doesn't look very realistic, but what we can do is use a blend mode. There's one of those three things again, layer masks, brushes, blend modes. And all I do is change the blend mode from normal and we'll go to overlay. And you can see straight away it kind of snaps in. And the great thing about this is, I mean, I love doing this to add the backgrounds in, but with this one especially, can you see the shadows? This is the hard thing about doing composites is getting the shadows just right. But if I just turn the floor off, Here's that soldier's original shadows here. You can just see them on this area here. Let's put the floor in. Can you see the shadows here as well? And underneath the boots. So now it actually looks like he's planted down on that floor. And I absolutely love that. Really love that. Right, okay, so that's that bit. Now, a couple of little things I'll do to tidy it all up. How are we getting on over here? Uh, not so obvious in sight. Do you know what I mean? Usually there's lots of little guys. All oh, right, okay. I'll cover that in a uh, minute, Johan, but... Uh, we've now got the floor in, got this perspective, we've darkened it down, we've got the shadows. Now we know that the uh, soldier's in focus, the background's slightly out of focus, but the part here of the floor where it's joining the wall is razor sharp. So we need to soften that down. In fact, what we'll do, let's just turn off that layer mask just for now. So what I want to do is use a tool that you might not use that often. I'm going to come over to the toolbar over here, and here we have the blur tool. I love this. I'm going to go for the blur tool, uh, keep the mode as normal, strength. We'll keep to, uh, let's actually put the strength to around about, I think we'll probably go for around about 75, something like that. Don't need to tick all layers because I'm actually doing it directly onto the floor. And I want to actually blur that kind of line going right across the back of the floor where it's joining the wall. Now I don't need to kind of brush all the way along like this. What I can do is just simply, if I just uh, go to the left hand side, I'm going to click down just there. Then I'm going to hold down my shift key move over to the side, and then click there as well. So what that does is when I click down once, hold the shift key, click down on the other side, it does a straight line, whoop, straight across, adding that blurring as well. And you can just probably see that 
when we zoom in just to here now. So let's see what we can do before. You're not really going to see that. Step it back. There you go. See a bit of a blur there. And then step forward. So it kind of blurs it just a little bit there. Now, the last couple of things I tend to do with the flooring, let's just add another blank layer. I'm going to get my marquee selection tool. I need to add a little bit of a shadow in the floor down here as well. So first of all, I'm going to draw out a line going right across the middle there. And we'll just want to soften that down. It doesn't be too sharp. I need to soften this down, but or feather it rather. But the question is, how much do you soften it down? How much do you feather it? Well, a little trick you can do there when you've got this uh, selection is just go to Quick Mask and press Q. So now we can see the selection that we've got. We can see uh, the line going across here. What we can actually do, if we don't know how much we need to feather something, just blur it. So now I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And you can see now how that Quick Mask is blurring. That's actually also going to feather. So whatever I blur is kind of the same as feathering. But now I can actually physically see now how much I need to do rather than playing a guessing game of, I don't know, feather it by five pixels or 10 pixels. I can actually see it now. And I love being able to see things. It's much easier for me. So let's probably take it up to maybe four. We'll click OK. We'll come out of Quick Math by pressing Q. And then all I'll do then is go Edit. We'll choose Fill. And we'll choose Black like so. Let's just deselect that. And you can see now, look, not severe. It's nice and soft, feathered on the top and the bottom. So we'll do that. And then we'll go to Free Transform. And then I'll just kind of make it a little bit smaller. So it fits right into that little bit just there. And then I'll lower the opacity way down to maybe 30%, something like that. That's the first thing I do. And then the last thing I do is this. Add another blank layer. Then I'm going to go to get a gradient. Now, press G to go to the gradient tool. In the top left-hand corner, I'm going to choose this one here. The second one in, which is foreground to transparent. But the gradient I'm going to use is the fourth one along on the top. Here you've got the options bar. I'm going to choose the fourth one across. And this is where we're going to do a gradient. Whatever I do at the top, it'll do the bottom as well. So it's kind of like a mirror gradient. So what I'll do now then, I'll put my little cursor right at the point where the floor and the wall join. And I'll hold down my shift key and drag upwards. Now, if I hold the shift key down, it goes in a perfectly straight line. Can you see that? Nice straight line. And then I'll let go. So then we do that. And then I'll just lower the opacity down to maybe, let's have a look here, maybe 40, something like that. So let's have a look. Let's just put that into a little group so you can see just a little bit of how we can start to blend that wall. And great thing is as well, we use the layer mask. So now it hides behind the soldier. So it's just a real quick one, but just to see how the little things that I do to floors, because somebody did ask me, when you put a floor in, how do you make it look as if it's kind of realistic the way it's joining the wall? That's literally how I do it. So uh, that'll do. Right, break from me while I just mop my brow. Let's just show you this uh, quick box here of the cover shoot. And you're back in the room. Whew, it's hot. I just had to mop my brow. All right. Actually, that cover shoot thing I just showed you there, um, like I mentioned at the start, it was Frank and Anouik Dorhoff who um, filmed me doing this, uh, filmed me doing the actual photo shoot side of things when I went to the Netherlands a couple of weeks ago. Um, Frank doesn't know I'm going to say this, but do us a favor. Head over to Frank's YouTube channel, Frank Dorhoff. Frank puts out tons of videos. I mean, loads and loads of videos. And although Frank's a photographer, his videos cover all kinds of different things. So he talks about what kit he's using. He tries out different uh, audio equipment and a new watch that he's looked at lately. So it's kind of a real mixture. Frank's YouTube channel is a real mixture of photography, lighting, gadgets, software, you name it. There's loads of stuff on there. So just head over to Frank's channel, click on subscribe or follow and check out the kind of videos that Frank's doing because he works damn hard doing those videos and he needs a bit of love because he really does put a lot of effort into that. So I'd really appreciate if you could do that. Uh, right, let me just show you one real quick one. Now, I mentioned about doing the, um, what do you might call it, the uh, newsletter and all the little things I'm doing on the newsletter. I'm, re I'm designing, uh, would appreciate a like on Facebook, like what you see, cheer. <laughs> um, 
designing the new newsletter and I'm putting these little social media icons on the bottom. So I went online, found these particular ones here, which are ideal. Everyone knows what they are. So then yesterday I was thinking, right, I need to just crop them out and then drop them all in. But it kind of reminded me of something that I used to do quite a bit um, when I first started using Photoshop. But the thing with Photoshop is because it gets updated so often, all this great stuff kind of gets buried down in the menus and we forget all about it. But this here is just a very, very quick one. And it's great for those of you who maybe um, have icons like this or lots of stuff on a screen that you need to kind of separate and straighten all up. Let me show you what I mean. Because I used this when I was, um, a few years ago, I took some scans. I had about three and a half thousand photographs that my wife gave me of her, her brothers and sister and her mom and dad when they were grown up throughout the years. And I scanned every single one. And I'd put four or five or six or whatever onto the scanner and then I'd use this to cut them out, make them individual files so I could then save them. It saved me a ton of time. But here, let's just show for an example. Here we've got some uh, icons here. I'm going to go, try and remember where this is now. File, Automate, and this little one here, Crop and Straighten Photos. So when I click on this, Photoshop is now going to look at that particular file. It's done it really quickly, actually. It's going to look at that file containing all those items, and it's going to cut them all out. So here's the original all together. But now look at the top of the screen here. All been cut out. Nice and quick, nice and simple. I've not had to use the crop tool. I've not had to straighten them or anything, anything like that at all. So I love that because it's so damn simple. But let me just show you another example here. Uh, can you do anything of this thing? Uh, right, <laughs> trying, I'm trying to read comments as well. I'm trying to multitask, which is not easy for a bloke. So imagine now this was a scan. Imagine I'd scanned these pictures on my scanner and I needed to crop them to then save them as individual files so that I could then go and maybe get printed. Same thing here. I've placed them down. They're all squiggly and all over the shop. Again, let's just go to File, Automate, and Crop and Straighten. Let's just see what it does there. And there you go as quick as that. You've got to say, that is pretty handy. So there's the original, and here's all the ones that have been cut out and cropped. Absolutely love that. So that's just a real quick one. Uh, and if you're still there, how many are doing for numbers? We're doing good for numbers. I'll tell you what, you are hardcore considering how hot it is. Those of you who missed it, this is what uh, this is how hot it What's is. What's the weather like out there? It's hot. Damn hot. Real hot. Hot and this is my shorts. I can cook things in it. It literally is that hot. It, <laughs> right, okay, last one then, because what am I doing now? Uh, two minutes to go. Right, I'm going to try and make this one a half an hour. All right, so let me just show you one more thing. Uh, bum, 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 bum. So this is, again, I'm trying to cover things that I get asked about a lot, so I want to try and just quickly show you this one. Uh, those of you who have maybe... Um, Dan Rhodes, good. I'm in the garden with a cold beer. Mark Harris, you just live... You, I want your life, Mark. You're either on holiday or in your garden with a beer. You've got a good life. Um, right. <laughs> All right, okay, so the last one. This was a picture that I took up in uh, Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, this last couple of days. This is a guy called Sam Walker, absolute fantastic guy with a most amazing bike. If any of you have ever been to or not been to Yorkshire, go to this place. I think it's called Ribblehead, something like that, Ribblehead Viaduct. Absolutely beautiful place, and apparently, word has it, that they filmed Harry Potter there. I've never actually seen Harry Potter, but somebody told me Hogwarts train went over this well, apparently, went over this uh, bridge. But the thing that I, I got asked, what's Frank's surname? Dorhoff, D-O-O-R-H-O-F. I'll put a link in my YouTube channel as well. Uh, but Peter, if you follow him, you're a legend. Um, okay, so the last thing then. One thing I got asked about with this particular picture was how did I make it look kind of like a painting? And I think I've shown this. I don't know. Well, I've lost count how many times I've shown this. But if any of you have never seen this, this is what I do to make my pictures have kind of a, I guess it almost gives them like a 3D look, especially when they're printed out. Uh, but it's kind of like a, uh, a painterly, cartoonish kind of feel to it. It's not a plug-in. It's all built in within Photoshop. It's dead easy to do. Let me just come over to the uh, layers here. And I'll just turn, or in fact, let's just delete all the ones that get to this stage here. So this is the picture where it's kind of been, in fact, let me just show you the before and after. People always like to see the before and after, don't they? step back so there's the original there's the finished picture there and uh there's the original there you go so that's the out of camera and there's the final retouch picture before after something like that oh and those of you who uh, uh might have seen that video i've shown about how to use quick mask oh uh, not quick mask um content to wear fill 
had to use that when I was getting rid of that. Uh, I'm not I'm pointing at the screen here. Got had to get rid of the top of the softbox there because it was pulling in uh, bits of Sam's hair in his jacket. So very useful, very useful technique. Right, okay, so let me just quickly show you this then. Let's just get rid of uh, these layers here. Boom, right. So this is how I add that cartoon painterly kind of look. And I would say I do this on possibly 99% of my pictures to some degree or, not, or another. So two things, well, a couple of things you need to do. First one, create a merged or stamp layer. Again, Shift, Control, Alt and E on PC. Shift, Command, Option, E on, uh, on Mac. Once you've done that, press Command or Control J to create a copy of it. So what we'll do now then, let's just come over here. I'm going to rename this one, whoop, look. And this one here, I'm going to call sharpen or details, whatever. And we'll turn off the look, the sharpen one here. I'm only going to work on the look one for the moment. Let me just zoom in just a touch. So here's what we do. We go filter, noise, and reduce noise. Now when this comes up, we get quite a nice big dialog box. If I put my cursor over Sam's face just around about there, we can bring Sam just to that point. Now you'll see there's four sliders, strength, preserve details, reduce no uh, color noise, and sharpen details. The only one you want to worry about is strength. Everyone else, take to zero. And I tend to use the strength one here, round about eight or nine, something like that. And you can hopefully see, if I put my cursor in this preview area here, and I press down, that's before, that's after, before, after. And it really does kind of smooth it out, but almost gives it like a waxy kind of feel to it. So I'm just going to click OK. So that's obviously applied it to the whole picture. And I really do love the look it gives. So we'll go to here, just about see if I turn that before, after, before, and after. Now that's great, but the only downside is when we smooth it out and give it that kind of plasticky, painty kind of look, it also gets rid of the sharpness in certain areas. So we need to bring the sharpness back. So what we need to do is this. Turn on the sharpen layer, like so. And then what we're going to do is go to filter, other and high pass. Now I'll take this right down to one and you can see hopefully on your screen can you see how you can just about see the makings of Sam you can see him there now at such a low number there one pixel radius all that you're seeing now are the areas at the sharpest and then the most contrast and as luck would have it they're the bits that we need to bring through that kind of effects as well. So I'm going to leave it at pixel radius of one. In fact, I never go more than one pixel radius. So we'll click OK. So the next thing we need to do is to get rid of the gray. So we're just going to go from normal and for this one, hard light. So now look, let's put these two layers into the group. Let's just uh, hold down the shift key. So they're both in a group and we'll go to here, put a new group from layers and we'll call it look. So now look, if we go, um, let's have a look, we'll turn this one off. That's before, that's with the porcelain look, and that's after. So it's still maintaining that look on the hair, but the sharp hair is certainly on his beard, on the glasses, is being brought back. I really don't know how that's kind of coming across on the screen, but definitely worth giving a go. Very, very simple. All right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover there. You still with me? How many are you doing for numbers? We're doing good for numbers, guys. You've done <laughs> really appreciate it, because it is damn hot. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, what else can I sell you? Oh, a couple of things then. So don't forget, um, I'm going to go through some of the comments. If I, if I don't do them while, I, while I'm in here now, I'm, I'm in a really hot room. I've had to shut the window so there's no noise from outside and also shut the door here. And I've got all this soundproofing stuff. This room is really, really hot. So I will go through any comments that you've left on there. I will go through those and answer them as well. I'm going to stick around for a while, but in a cooler part of the house. Uh, but just to remind you, make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel or follow it. I'd really appreciate that. The numbers are going great. And it's great seeing loads of comments coming through as well. And those of you who do comment, hopefully you'll notice that I do get back to you on that. So subscribe if you haven't already. But make sure that you uh, join my email or newsletter group because I'm now starting to put more stuff out. But I need to get some feedback from you as well. But hopefully those of you who are part of the newsletter group will see some pretty cool stuff coming. Um, that uh, creativity pack is going to be released soon, but I'm going to email you this week because I need to check something with you. What else would you want to see in there? And that's going to be the same with that cover shoot stuff that Frank filmed for me. I want to make sure that what I've put together covers everything that you would want it to. And the only way I can find out is by emailing you and you get back to me. But there's going to be discounts for you and I'm going to send out that action for that skin smoothing as well. But guys, thank you so much uh, for sticking around on this very warm evening. I'm not complaining because I love the sun. Uh, but uh, let's get out, let's have a cold one 
and get outside where Mark is at the moment. Uh, but guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Glyn Jewish, and I want to let you know about my brand new book, Photograph Like a Thief. Now, I truly believe that your own unique style starts with copying because you have to have a starting point. But when I say copying, I mean looking at the work of other great photographers, their lighting, composition, posing, how they retouch their images, learning from it and going on to create something completely new. Now I've packed a lot into this book. There's a whole chapter dedicated to reverse engineering, equipment, my favourite retouching techniques and 10 chapters taking you from coming up with an idea, the lighting, the setup, the photo shoot and the complete retouching steps from start to finish. So check out Photograph Like a Thief, available now where all